this is Simon Stark, and in this video we are looking at the spread of Protestant ideas. So first of all we need to look at the early English Protestantism. Now after Luther's attack on the Catholic Church, there is little evidence to suggest that there was a substantial movement toward Protestantism. Now the only evidence of Protestantism was the intellectual reformers who met at the White Horse in Cambridge. And this group was led by Robert Barnes, who was later granted a place in government before being burnt for heresy in 1540. And the other leading members of this group included Thomas Bilney, who was burnt for heresy in 1531, and Thomas Cranmer, who was the future archbishop. Now apart from this, however, the evidence for early English Protestantism is fairly thin. Now the rise of Protestantism happened from 1529 onwards, and this is because Henry VIII started to encourage criticism of both the Pope and the clergy so that he would be able to pressurise the Pope into granting a divorce. So the King's divorce, the campaign to win support for the divorce in European universities, and the growing influence of leading figures who were sympathetic to reform like Anne Boleyn and Thomas Cromwell increased the support of reformers. Now Cromwell was able to manage the reform campaign in Parliament whilst Anne Boleyn was able to influence the King. Now she influenced the King to the works of Tyndale who obviously wrote the first Bible in English. Uh, he, she protected heretics such as uh, Robert Foreman in London, and she also encouraged the rise of reformers into government. Now, her influence meant that reformers such as Hugh Latimer and Nicholas Shaxton, who had previously been accused of heresy, were given the vacant bishops' posts. Now, she also influenced the selection of Thomas Cranmer as the Archbishop of Canterbury in 1532. This meant that by 1536, those who favoured Luther's reforms were firmly established in government. And although Henry VIII was still unwilling to make any major changes to their doctrines, preachers such as John Bale, Edward Crome and Robert Barnes were able to spread Protestant teachings throughout London, while Cranmer encouraged similar activities in Suffolk. Now, when Anne Boleyn was executed, many people think that the um, Reformation slowed down. However, it didn't slow down because Jane Seymour came along. And Jane Seymour was born in a family which leaned towards Protestantism. And even though Jane died after childbirth, she had delivered Henry with the heir he needed. So, in the late 1530s, Cromwell started to change his attention to reforming the teachings of the church. And in 1536, he worked with Cranmer to introduce many Protestant beliefs. Now, Cromwell was able to do this as the king had previously appointed him as vicegerent in spirituals in 1534. However, they did have to be careful not to offend Henry VIII's own conservative beliefs, as Henry VIII was actually a Catholic. Now, Cromwell soon started to publish the Ten Articles of Faith, which was passed by Convocation, and Convocation is the Church's Parliament. However, it is likely that this was written by Cromwell. Now, these Ten Articles included some Catholic ideas, yet they were also some distinctly Lutheran ideas. And some of these articles were very vague. For example, there was no mention of purgatory, yet the dead were to be prayed for. Now, these articles were enforced in the 1536 and 1538 with injunctions, which ordered the clergy to follow the articles. And the 1536 injunctions placed a restriction on the number of holy days and discouraged pilgrimages. Now, the 1538 injunctions condemned both pilgrimages and the veneration of relics and images, and this was the honouring of religious objects. Now, Clergymen who uh, upheld these traditional practices were forced to say that they did uh, no longer held the same belief. In 1537, a more conservative bishop's book was introduced, and this restored the fourth sacrament, which had been omitted from the Ten Articles, yet they were given a lower status. So the injunctions of 1538 also required each parish church to acquire an English Bible, and every single person was encouraged to read it. 
Now, the first official translation of the Bible was published in 1537, and this was based on the works of Tyndale, yet there were contributions from Miles Coverdale. Now, the first great Bible was released in 1539, and this included the picture of the king graciously giving the word of God with Cranmer and bishops on one side and Cromwell and politicians on the other. By 1538, however, Henry VIII decided that the religious changes had been too drastic and therefore he started to revert back to the Catholic ideas. Now this was because he also needed some Catholic allies in Europe with the possibility of a joint French and Spanish invasion of England. So therefore, in 1539, Henry VIII introduced the Six Articles Act and this reasserted Catholic doctrines and the denial of transubstantiation was deemed heretical. Now this resulted in both Latimer and Shaxton resigning from their positions as bishops. Cranmer was also forced to send his wife to live with relatives in Germany after the six articles stated that clerical celibacy had to continue. Now this all shows the waning influence of Cromwell by 1538, especially after the marriage to Anne of Cleves. Now the Catholic Howard Germany were also gaining influence thanks to Henry's marriage to Catherine Howard in 1540. Now, when the infidelity of Catherine was revealed in 1541, however, Protestant reformers once again gained the ear of the king, and we'll learn about this in more depth when we look at the last years of Henry VIII's reign. So thank you for watching, and see you soon. Bye.